this isn't just a lesson on how to deal with prison. It's a lesson on how to deal with life. One that I'm guilty of forgetting all the time. As long as I'm not locked up, there's always hope that I might win the lotto. Or that my girl might introduce an exotic bird in the bedroom. But that shit's never gonna happen if you're in jail. In New York, as in much of the country, there's been a push for rehabilitation instead of incarceration over the past few years. What gets my undies in a bunch, though, is that if I were to commit the same crime of cocaine possession with intent to sell that I got caught for in 2004 under the current PL code, instead of getting a three to nine year sentence, it's very likely I'd get rehab and or probation. I know it's a little late for me to play the sympathy card after all the unabashed fucking up I've been doing for the last 20 or so years, but does anyone out there not think it's a little bit Fruit Loops that I've been prohibited to drink or do any drugs for the last eight and counting years? And that getting caught doing so is punishable by incarceration? Um, I got a letter today. This is it. This is uh, from Brett. You know, when he went to, when he went to prison, I heard about it um, immediately. I think, you know, he's, he's in there for six weeks, I think. Yeah. And after doing, you know, multi-year stretches, it sounds like he's pretty used to it. At the Westchester bus station, waiting for Brett to uh, hopefully show up. He's been in jail for the past eight weeks, seven weeks now. He's supposed to get out last Tuesday, and it's now a week, exactly a week later. And he still hasn't gotten out, but we got word that he's supposed to be getting out now. He's supposed to be here at four. It's now seven, so we've been here for three hours, waiting for him to show up on a bus. Oh wait, oh it's Brett's mom. <laughs> Fellas, what's up? Dude. Thank you, man. What up? How you doing? Right, stick the camera no, that's cool. I get it. Oh. Dude, we couldn't find you. I know, I believe you. This place sucks. The like an upstate jail, upstate prison's more like that. Um we'll have a, a huge yard outside. So this shit, like you're confined. Most of them are wreck decks, so you don't even see the sun. If you want to go outside, oh, really? you're still like in a caged, in a caged area. Here too? Yeah, well the, the pen I was in had a yard, which is, which is rare for these places. There was the only good thing about where I was at was we had an outdoor yard, so I got some okay. sun. Else I would not have seen the sun. Wow. That's the only place with an outdoor yard. Is this it here? Well, I don't know where the fuck I am. I've never been to Valhalla before. Who goes to Valhalla unless they're going to jail? Is a uh, on you? Hey. Yeah. I got him. You want to hit me with thoughts on? All right, here you go. What's up, baby? I love you too, baby. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, it's fortunate and unfortunate, but like two months really is, isn't that long. <laughs> I've, I've had longer stints, unfortunately, you know, like. Yeah, we're on One Tenth Street, so he he could get away with that shit. Like right there, that is beautiful. That's Central Park. And then right here, it looks nice until you, like you look up there and you see that that's clearly a fucking prison that not many people know about. But all day, every day, there's inmates walking in and out of there and work with these. I had a three to nine. I ended up doing eight months on that, so I was blessed. Then I got caught up in another case about a year later. So now I got two state numbers. I'm a two-time felony offender. The way that the work release works is lob, you're out for eight hours, and then boom, you gotta come back to this spot. I mean, obviously this is better, being out in the street, being able to make money, being around people you love, but just the frustration of having to do this, and I don't think I'm like the only one that's like kind of like psychologically, maybe a little weak or discipline-wise, but just, going to work and then coming back here. And there was other things too. You, you know how to have a cell phone in there? Or an ID or credit cards. So I literally, I used to have a fucking, this is crazy. I'd have a Ziploc bag. I'd put my cell phone, 
my ID and my credit cards in it. I go stash it up in those woods. No way. Yeah, and then the next morning I had to go pick it up. But I started making it worse on myself though because I started dabbling and doing drugs again. So now I'm worried about beating the piss test. So like those two days before my piss test, I'm just sitting there pounding water. You know, I passed them all, but I didn't mean to piss dirty, man, but it's, it's possible that's how it went down because there's a lot of stress going around. Basically, I don't really process stress, but when I pissed dirty, I kind of knew I was pissing dirty. Like, I pushed it to the limit, and that shit was dirty. And I still, I didn't believe that they would do me that dirty. So I still kind of thought, oh, I'll, I'll get away with this. They didn't let me get away with it. Maybe I'm addicted to fun. Maybe fun affected my judgment. I can only fantasize about how my life would have turned out with a couple of smarter moves. Who knows? My only excuse is that life seemed dull and I tried to spice it up. I'm not gonna go out there after six years in stupid prison and turn into Main Street Marty. I'm not gonna be working on building my financial portfolio, ironing slacks, eating hamburger helper, and getting blowjobs from the secretaries. But if I make it to 40, then I guess anything is possible. I'm gonna be a physical fitness trainer, slash escort, slash rock climber, slash porno guy. I should get enough thrills and money from that stuff to stay away from the drugs, so I'm feeling pretty psyched about the future. That will help me stay out of jail, definitely. You wanna take this off? Do not remove under penalty of law. Oh, really? No, not really, just kidding. Yeah, I take this off. Wait, do you, you just, it? you believe you're not supposed to? No, there's a you thing on it. You get arrested or something. What? Once you own the bed, yeah, once you own it, you can do, do it. You I'll take it off, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Dude, a king size bed, man. Fuck, dream come true. My life's pretty back in, uh, in normal now. Like, I just I want to get a job. Hopefully a job I like and everything will go back to normal. What's normal though? <laughs> I, guess, I guess normal's too strong of a word. <laughs> There's like no like, like rebound on it, man. You just lie down, it's like, oh, oh my God. Yo, it's shit like this that makes me never want to go back to jail. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is like the most like serene, like bright Dude. light. Well, because I've explained this in lots of my articles, because it's really is one of the main things that, it's just one of those things about jail that you just, there's so many things about jail that you just don't think about in everyday life. That was a good thing, though, about this, uh, this Valhalla thing, though. It put me more in perspective. Those two months I was in there, I thought a lot about drugs, and I was like, eh, I ain't doing it. So, but I wasn't doing it. I had been doing well. It's tough, you know. It's just, it's too, uh, it's too early to tell, really. But at this point, my mind's not really focused on drugs. I don't think I can ever see I'm confidently sworn off in there. That's just me. It's tough. I it, mean, most people say, like, well, why can't you just do that? But. I've done it before. Well, maybe the reason is that I've done it before. And I ain't doing it no more. But then I do it. So I feel like a phony if I just keep saying that and then going back. So and like if I don't really do the 12-step program, relapse, all that bullshit. But that's how they do it, one day at a time. Today I will not use. The risk that an addict, once they have a kind of a psychological view of themselves, you know what I mean, begin to say, uh, understand their own addiction in terms of that, but it doesn't change their addiction. It just gives them a rationalization for their addiction. Oh, that's my problem, you know what I mean? I'm depressed and that's why I, I, have, to, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. So nothing changes. Mm -hmm. But the real issue is not that. The issue is how do we achieve abstinence and sobriety in the individual as they stop using drugs that has to stop. And here, the problem with classical psychotherapy and that whole view was, it was grounded in the assumption that if the, under, the individual understood themselves psychologically, then they would stop. 
they never worked. That is, that never did anything for heroin addiction. I mean, heroin addicts used to come and sit on the couch, you understand that, and get psychotherapy two or three times a week and then go out and shoot dope. In fact, when they sat on the couch, they were often high, you understand, while they were on the couch, getting a good understanding of their, of their psychological problems. But it didn't change their behavior. This is actually my girlfriend's piss because I've been on a bit of a bender. Uh, yeah, I don't gotta piss. Do you mind turning the sink on a little bit? Why do you make them turn the water on? Because this thing, at first it doesn't make noise. I don't have any liquid to put in it right now. At first it'll just be like, pss, like piss. But when it gets to the bottom, it doesn't get gurgling noise. Like when you open it up, it'll be like, you know? And if they were really paying attention, they would hear it. So for parole, this will not work. Parole looks at your dick while you piss. 72 hours, you can flush out any drug, any drug. Just drink a lot, and you'll be good. And I take this off, fill it up like that much, and it's that easy, you know? Oh man, it's Patrick. One of the main reasons to call is to update you on, on Brett. I, I'm assuming you probably haven't talked to him in a little bit. Uh, what happened? Did he, get, did he get put in jail or something? Yeah, he's back in. So, oh man, I was wondering why I hadn't heard from him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah where, when, it, did he, when did he go back in? I guess it's like two, about two weeks ago now. Gotcha. He's a drug offender, yeah, and he probably has a drug problem, but uh, he's a non-violent offender, and he wasn't like some big-time drug dealer, and he's been in yeah. and out of jail for like eight years now. So, I mean, we how much how much of our tax dollars are going to some? You know what I mean? Like, look, I don't want to spend a penny of my money because some guy wanted to get high, but it's just the war on drugs is the biggest sham we've ever been sold. You know what I mean? Maybe this is hopefully a bottom, a rock bottom moment for him that he can just like, just end this shit for good. I, I hope, I don't right. know, we'll, we'll see. Just let me know if there's anything I can do on my end, okay? We'll do, start Paul. Start up the, start up the free Bird Berry Kill t-shirts right now. <laughs> Absolutely. You guys have a great day and if you need anything, you know how to reach me, okay? All right, sounds great. Thanks so much, Paul. Okay, later. Bye. Hello? Hey man, what's going on? Good to hear from you, dude. Yeah, man, this fucking sucks. Uh, I know. How you holding up? Um, I'm not really good at all, bro. It is what it is, man, you know. I, I can deal with it, but this, this shit hurts. I can't pass the blame on any of this stuff. Like, what were you doing? Are you can you talk about it or no? I can talk about it. So, and then, like, a fucking coward said, just going in there, being like, you yeah, know, you know, I lapsed. You know, I'm, I'm dirty. So, I tried to get over it. I put the fucking IV bottle in the old piss. Stacked this shit on my dick, like, I'm 24. I got the way with it. I had clean piss in it. Oh, uh, wow. Like, 
I would be home right now. I'd be taking that shit like a man and then like, oh yeah, I use, I got a problem. All right, man. Just just hang in there, dude, and and hopefully um, hopefully we'll see you soon, and I'm sure we'll talk yeah. soon. All right, thanks, Charles. All right, hey, Brad. Wait. See you, buddy. Take it easy. Bye. Um, so it sounds like like uh, just from our talking, the therapy community is it may not be the thing, but it sounds like the best hope for a lot of people. Well, I'm invested in that, so you're getting a bias. Okay. You're getting you're 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 hearing it from me. But, but what you are hearing is still the residual expressions of my passion for this, because I saw this 50 years ago. When once a junkie, always a junkie, no treatments for addiction. Then begin to see, and particularly heroin addicts, and then begin to see these therapeutic communities and these men and women come in and begin to see it's, they begin to change in their lives in there. Like, what are you preparing for right now? Um, shit, man. Worst case scenario, they'll put me in, in Rikers, straight from court, I guess. Then I gotta wait for a long-term residential program. There's always gonna be negative consequences from, from uh, opiates like that. You know, that's kind of what I was just saying, because once you do it, if you don't have it, then I'm not as happy, you know? Whereas now, when I'm clean, and there's no possibility of me getting it. There's no possibility that I even want to do it. You know, even though I'm going through all this bullshit, I'm relatively happy right now, and I'm not, I'm not craving that shit at all because I haven't done it in a while. Why not just fucking put it to bed? Like it's fucking destroying your life. Like your apart, you were moving into an apartment with a, and I, and now she's alone for two months because of this fucking drug. Yeah, I know. It's it's, it's obviously not even one percent worth it i need to live desperately and carefully doing whatever it takes to avoid the stinking clink clink when i take a serious look around it dawns on me how much wasted potential there is inside how many people are living with regrets will never have a chance to make good on them the irony of drugs is that i got addicted to selling them and using them because of the freedom it brought me but ultimately it stripped me of much more than i deserved Still